Queens, Rhode Island. Welcome to the Potterverse. It is a podcast dedicated to the book and film universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners. Let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and this chapter just starts off with nothing but straight nightmare fuel. I know it's That's, true, man. You it just is all, all you want to do is just like you want to just crawl into your own little skin and throw a, yourself into a ball, take that ball, put it into a box, lock it up, throw the key away, yep. and and just hope it goes into a black hole. You know, it's so funny because like we've all had our own versions of basically this nightmare in our nightmares, hopefully oh, yeah. not come true. I know for me, you know, some people it's they're up on stage and they're naked. Um, for me, I frequently have had like <laughs> my worst one. For those of you who don't know, I did beauty pageants in college mm-hmm. to help um, get money for books and stuff, and it was awesome and hysterical at the same time. Time. Uh, so yes, pageant girl for life. I know, I know. Many of you <laughs> looking at me now are like, how is this even possible? It was. They let me in. Welcome to Rhode Island. Um, so, but this is actually a nightmare of mine that still, at this day and age where I am definitely not doing beauty pageants, I worry I have these dreams where I'm in an opening number and I'm in like a sparkly <laughs> dress and I don't know the steps <laughs> because I was terrible at dancing in general, which oh. I need to also note. Yeah. We, uh, Blake and I, we live in the state where Hocus Pocus 2 is being filmed. Yes. Next month begins Hocus Pocus 2 filming in the state of Rhode Island. Uh, many of you, of course, are probably Hocus Pocus fans. You've been wishing and hoping and dreaming that one day this day would happen. It's here. It's here. And we have applied to be extras in the movie, ourselves and our little lad and our little lass. And Blake wrote down that one of my special talents is dancing. <laughs> It is dancing. Now, mind you, it means that- It's not like real life human dancing. No, it is not. It's like the Elaine dance. Yeah, exactly. So (laughs) obviously there's going to be a dance number. You know, we've got the, I put a spell on you. I got a feeling that it's going to actually be a whole nother, yeah, yeah, dance number like- like, like she's concert, all that like concert type yeah there's thing. going yeah, to yeah. be a big thing they said like let us know if you're a dancer let us know if you have special hobbies like that you can play an instrument yep. so yes Blake put me down that I play an instrument I play several instruments actually except he also puts down I dance you do I don't I dance in the kitchen well listen I, I put you down as a dancer so that you could get selected and well, we could figure the dancing out <laughs> We will need a lot of practice. It's kind of like when you interview for jobs. Yeah, I could do that. I mean, so sure. basically when I get called for Hocus Pocus 2 and they say, all right, Mary Larson, you're front and center. You're the dancing saxophonist. I'm going to feel like Harry Potter <laughs> yes. in this very moment while he is called up to the to be uh, sent off with the rest of the four champions. So here we are, chapter 17. Well, hold on, but before, four, before, we get in, before we get into this whole I thing. I wanted to do my quote. Uh, uh, oh, you're... Uh, um, well, actually, before you do the quote, a little bit of housekeeping. Oh. Uh, housekeeping? It- <laughs> oh, I'll come back later then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> um, that's a Prisoner of Azkaban reference for all you nerds. Um, yeah. The title for the third Fantastic Beasts film has been announced today. It is Fantastic Beasts and the Secrets of Dumbledore. Oh. Hello, yes. nurse. Okay, yeah. I'm here for that title. And, and actually, there is also a release date for the film. It is April 15th, 2022. Interesting. Uh, is April generally a month to release movies? Yeah, the the, the okay. summer season is now, it, it, it used to start in July. Okay. And then it made its way to May. And then all of a sudden, starting in like 2016-ish, April became the beginning of the summer blockbuster season. Is this their way to like not fight with anything that probably Disney has planned yeah, or absolutely. Marvel yeah. or some other like major, major crazy blockbuster? Yeah. Now, re- remember right now, WB, Warner Brothers, who owns Harry Potter and the Fantastic Beats uh, franchise, mm-hmm. they their streaming platform is HBO Max. That's, yes. that's the Warner Brothers streaming platform. So if you get HBO Max, that's great. Problem is they're only releasing films to both the HBO Max platform and theater until the end of this year. 
Okay. So you know how we watch Malignant and we and we watched I did uh, not watch that Godzilla one. versus King Kong and all the, yes. they came on the streaming platform immediately because that's the deal that they made. Um, the that will change January first. At that point, then uh, films will be strictly theatrical. So okay. that what what that means for all of you nerds is. Uh, Fantastic Beasts and The Secrets of Dumbledore will be a theatrical release only. It will not be going to HBO Max immediately like the I'm previous okay with films, that. That, films that we've watched. Uh, I mean, so, by okay with that, I mean, I'm not. I'm not okay. I mean, listen, I... I, I will want to see that one I, in the theater. Yes, I love the movie theater going experience. I there There's nothing that will beat it, I'm just in cheap. my opinion. I want my own popcorn. <laughs> that's I a, want my jammies. That's a good point. I don't want to have to wear shoes or a bra. Okay, yeah. I'm just saying it. Should I know it's a family- Me too. You know what? Oddly enough, I don't want to wear a bra either. There we go. All right. You know, family friendly, but we're keeping it real at the same time, friends. <laughs> I want cozy. I All want right. cozy. All right, now you can do your quote <laughs> Thank and you. do the whole thing. The full champions. Here we go. We must follow the rules, and the rules state clearly that those whose names come out of the Goblet of Fire are bound to compete in the tournament. Well, Barty knows the rule book back to front, said Bagman, beaming and turning to Karkaroff and Madame Maxine as though the matter was now closed. The end. Yeah, I have a. Well, yeah, I, I yeah, got some yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. I've got That's some questions. That's why I chose this quote. That's my a friend. great choice, my love. You're welcome. All right, let's get into the show, shall we? Yeah. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. Grab yourself another cup of pumpkin juice because, believe it or not, it is still Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> it is still Somehow. Halloween in the Goblet of Fire. So basically, uh, the the champions and uh, are all inside this room, including Harry, and all of the judges are there, and they decide, yeah, Harry does have to be here, and they try to figure out why he was selected, and they don't really figure that either. And um, yeah, it's mixed emotions, and Ron doesn't really like Harry anymore. Yeah, uh, so sad. All right, so let's let's get into this. Oh, yeah. We do have a little bit of a hard out here, so this is going to be a relatively quick chapter for for for. Luckily, it is a small chapter. Well, here's so. the scoop, poop. Okay, those of you who've watched the movie, which all of you have watched this movie, most of this is covered aside from Dumbledore's asked calmly. Okay, yeah, that this is essentially what happens in the movie. Yeah, I yes, uh, for the most part, and I don't understand why Madame Maxine calls him Dumbledore. I don't get it. It's not like a cute little pet name. Just like how Hagrid has some weird ways that he says things, I think that this is just to add a little character flair and spice sure. to the book. Fine. Well, we will, we will have to make a shirt that says Dumbledore. I, con- I concur. <laughs> and okay. we will have to say... Sorry, go ahead. But but like you said, so yeah. you know we're not necessarily. We all know what happens. I mean, yes. I just kind of laid it out. It's it's everything that you right, see inside so, the the movie and more. But we've got some massive things that we right, need so to delve qu- into this my, chapter. My first immediate question. Look at about, us. We're like we're like ready. We're, we're ready like, to go. Cracking ready. knuckles. We're ready to go. Party crouch. All right. So my first immediate question is this. There's so many questions to this chapter. <laughs> That's really all this is going to be. It's uh, going to be like let's delve deep into this ish. The Goblet of Fire obviously chooses the Can't people. Can't say it that way. Uh, Did you put your name on the Goblet of Fire? Just say Goblet of Fire. Goblet of Fire. There you go. Okay, sorry. Everyone just took their headphones out of there. <laughs> no, that's true. Good point. Sorry, everybody. Um, the Goblet of Fire picks the contestants, obviously based on their merit and how worthy they are of uh, of the tournament. Having said that, it is later explained, possibly by Mad Eye Moody, that the Goblet of Fire was c- confunded yes. into thinking that there were, in fact, four yes. schools. Harry was the lone maybe participant. Maybe Maybe the American school was put in there. I don't know. Yeah, could who knows? Maybe it was your mama's school. I don't know. <laughs> your mama's school, <laughs> Mary. You know what? Yes. Bam. Like yes, Moody, aka. Okay. Party Crouch Jr. Here's the issue. Yes. The um, a major so plot hole that we're di- what, that we're or is it what that we're discovering here? Or is it? What, well, you haven't even let me get to it yet. I don't even know. I'm just so excited. I think the, a major narrative flaw and plot hole that we're getting to in this in this chapter is the fact that in in a, a narrative letdown. Let's put it that way. Is the fact that this this. <laughs> Barty Crouch says, hey, that's the rule, and it's a magic contract, so that's it. Sorry. They're to bound it. to compete in the tournament. Problem is, what happens if they don't? Okay, so generally, from when I think about, like, 
you know, the the vow that Snape makes to Narcissa. Yeah, if you uh, don't do it, you croak. Yes, exactly. So to me, if this is like an unbreakable vow, if this is a magical bind, then potentially Harry could die. Okay, like you don't compete, you're dead. It is not clarified. I agree with you. But here's my question. Okay, so what? So Harry has to do this. Then Harry ste- steps a foot on each task and says, I lose. You know, like, like just fail on purpose, Harry. Why do you have to actively try? So it says he is bound to compete in the tournament. Yeah. So if we put into the factors of like, okay, these are like magical binds that happen. Maybe Harry will actually die if he can't. That's sure. that's the level that I'm saying it. They don't say that, but for everyone to be this serious, that's how I take it. Harry has to compete. Yeah, because there's just a level of, well... Why can't we just figure this out? Exactly. Like, like, where is somebody saying this is absolutely foolish? So there's no stakes. There, there are no stakes to what the Goblet of Fire is. It needed to a, a, say, or else created. he will die. Yeah, he'll die, or it will make him show up. Like it, it'll be, he'll be physically pushed onto the field. Yeah. Yes. Or, or you know, uh, you know, or you're right. Let's just say for the sake of argument uh, that Harry says, "Nope, sorry, can't do it. Don't want to do it." Or Change okay, I lose. Sorry. Yes. Or or what's to say that uh, Dumbledore just says, okay, guys, let's just do three quick stupid tasks right now uh, for all four of you. Okay, here's, uh, here's, uh, here's, let's play Risk and let's do tic-tac-toe and let's do this. And then you just start the whole process all over again. Well, I will say that out of all the tasks, you know, the, the dragon one would have been really hard for Harry to have to fudge. You know, because he has to, like, be with a dragon. Like, is it timed, per se? You know, there's all these elements to it. Could yeah, there's a lot in? of factors here. So, you know, you you kind of start off, you start off where you have to fight you, for your life. You kind of, yeah, and that's what I'm saying about stakes, right? There are no proper stakes to what the Goblet of Fire sets up. And the Goblet of Fire itself, it, like, I still struggle with the fact that this book and the subsequent filmed are not named Harry Potter and the Triwizard Tournament. Or... Uh, Harry Potter and the the, the Hung- Hungarian Horta, whatever. Why does it I mean, have to be the are Goblet for nerds of Fire? At this point, stats are for nerds. Okay, Blake. Well, that's no, why. because the Goblet of Fire starts and then it's just gone. And the Goblet of Fire, as itself, is not that great of a magical object. I actually object. think it's a beautiful metaphor. It is a great magical object. They say it would take a wizard of great strength to be able to fund such a such a beautiful, strong, magical... Like, when Woody's explaining it, um, he said, because they hoodwinked a very powerful magical object. So this isn't just a boot. This isn't just a port key, okay? It is a very powerful magical object. We're talking level of, like, sorting hat, okay? Yeah. This is something... So think about it like that. Yeah, it can't sing and dance, but it has the power to sift through hundreds of students and figure out who is the most worthy. This is a very powerful magical object, and yet it gets infiltrated by dark forces Mm -hmm. and is able to be confunded and still puts Harry Potter in peril. I think that's what's huge. We actually have an individual, Barty Crouch Jr., who infiltrates all of Hogwarts, a seemingly very magical place that they should be able to keep Harry safe from, and he can't. So I said it as a big metaphor. For Voldemort being able to break in to a very magical place. Fair. I don't know. I mean, you're just like, I'm like, whatever. Bring it on. Yeah. (laughs) Let's debate in this chapter. So I agree with you. I feel like stakes need to we have need to have been stated a little bit more clearly. We've got Professor McGonagall who's, you know, um, trying to fight for him. We've got Professor Snape who's trying to fight for him. And and Dumbledore just asked, like, did you do it? Well, did you get someone older? Protecting Dumbledore against Harry. He is saying because because you got Kakaroff and you got Madame Maxine busting mm. uh, he, going on Dumbledore. McGonagall's protecting Dumbledore. Yes, and Snape is is Snape. I got I got some ideas about Snape. So we've got everybody in here. Okay, we have got. Let's see who we've got in this room. We've got Albus Dumbledore, Barty Crouch yep. Senior. We've got Ludo Bagman. We've got Madame Maxine. We've got Karkarov. That all makes sense. So we've got the heads of the houses, and we've got the other judges. Then we also have Minerva McGonagall, who yep. is the head of Gryffindor House. Well, Professor Sprout's not there. Professor Sprout is there. She is. Are you sure? She is there. Yes, Professor Sprout's there, and she. I didn't is, see your name. 
I believe she was there I, because I was like, this makes sense, but it didn't make sense for me to have Snape there. I'm pretty sure I saw Professor Sprout there for a hot second, I so I could be completely wrong. I, I, I'm going to go with it. You're wrong on this one. What happens if I'm right? If you're right, I will do whatever you want. Okay. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Nerds. Nerds. Let's Maybe. make it a bet. Maybe I am wrong. Anyway, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, what happens when I'm right? I don't know. I, I don't have time to look through this whole chapter right now, Blake. <laughs> but it is looking like it's you're like probably a, it's, right. It's like a four. It's a four page chapter. You got plenty of time. Anyway, um, so I took it as you know we've got at least Minerva McGonagall. She's like headmistress junior. All right, she's she's following along, and then you just have Snape. Why is Snape there? Why does Snape go into this? Well, he, his student isn't in it. It's not like it's a Slytherin student. So, in your opinion, Blake, here we are. Spoiler zone, everybody. Why is Snape in there? I will. Mm. All right. Uh, Want to get my thoughts? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, because it doesn't seem like you're ready for this conversation. No, 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 I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm just, I'm think, I'm trying to think of a reasonable explanation. We need to understand that these books are s- somewhat read from Harry Potter's perspective. Yes, it is not. I saw Snape do this, but we get all of no, the no, feelings. No, no, it's definitely Harry's POV. You know, it's Harry's, exactly. So we get the the flair of Snape's reactions to all of this from Harry's perspective. And, and Harry and Snape don't get along whatsoever. But, you know, we know from previous knowledge that Snape, also has to put up this front. He doesn't want anyone to know that he's here to protect Harry Potter his entire time through his life, but particularly his time in Hogwarts. So Snape realizes that something bad has happened. Everyone inside the hall understands that something really weird has happened. Yes. He follows them on in and um, he's making all these little little things. That are, it's no one's fault but Potter's Kakarov. So Karkarov's going, you know, saying, oh my gosh, I want to have my own students. Don't go blaming Dumbledore for Potter's determination to break the rules. He has been crossing lines ever since he arrived here. Yep. Dumbledore cuts him off. Thank you, Severus, said Dumbledore firmly. And Snape went quiet, though his eyes still glinted malevolently through his curtain of greasy black hair. Thoughts on that part? <sighs> he's... He's protecting Harry by throwing him under the bus. That's the way that it feels. And I also think that there is a little level of Snape knowing that this is Harry and trying to find a way to... to make this more about Harry. Like he, if Snape has a, a duty to protect Dumbledore as well. Mm-hmm. Like You can't have all these people going on Dumbledore and, and being like, dude... No, he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Not you can't blame him for what Harry has done. So, you know what I, I I go back and forth because of course he's trying to hide this thing. He's trying to hide the fact that he's trying to protect Harry, but also he doesn't like Harry. It's not that he secretly loves Harry and Harry's his favorite student. Like he doesn't like this kid that he has to protect. And I think by saying this stuff, like, oh, don't blame Dumbledore. Dumbledore's fine. It's Harry. Harry messes up all the time. Sure. Harry's actually quite stupid and does silly things all the time. He yes. should just be kicked out of here because he's a foolish kid. Yes. Let's get this foolish kid who messes up all the time mm-hmm. out of here. He's just trying to do the easy button. Yeah, that makes sense. You know what sense. I mean? Yep. Like, like, let me just go in there and act like I've known this kid for years. Yep. He pushes the line all the time. Which is true. It, it's Agreed. all true. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. It's all true. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there is a little bit of an agenda. This is not an agenda-free <laughs> uh, instance mm-hmm. here of uh, what's, what's happening in, the, in, in this little chamber that they're all in together. <sighs> I, I don't know. The Snape thing is confusing. And he makes his little like <clears throat> all the time. He's scoffing and you know making all this. It tip. feels like a bit of a production. It, you re- you're right. It feels like a production. Mm-hmm. Like when Harry says it wasn't me, it, it seems like <clears throat> yeah, okay, sure, <clears throat> yeah. Trying to get him out. Right. Trying to so, give some validity to the sense that, like, maybe these other judges, Madame Maxine, Karkaroff, Barty Crouch, Jr., Barty Crouch Sr., everybody, maybe they'll just be like, oh, wow, okay, yeah, he he shouldn't be here. Snape's trying to give reason on the side of, just get this kid out of here. Right, yeah. And what stinks is that Professor McGonagall doesn't pick up on it because he's just trying to say, like, maybe it was Dumbledore. Like, maybe, maybe Harry found a way around it. 
And Minerva stands up for Dumbledore right away because That's Madame Maxine goes in. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. But it's kind of a little tiff against Snape as well. And it stinks because Snape can't just lean in and be like, yo, I'm on your side. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm here to protect Harry Potter too because Minerva, she's on she's on high alert. This is her boy. This is, this is her right. golden child. This is the boy that she's cared for since he was a baby and she helped deliver him on the mm-hmm. doorstep. She is uber protective too. And it stinks that Minerva McGonagall and Severus Snape never get to have an honest conversation that they both want to protect Harry Potter his entire life. How sad is that? I mean, we get to see it even when they fight later on in Hogwarts before he leaves. He has no idea. She never gets to know until he's dead. Right. That that this was his purpose. Yeah, there's a lot of subtext here. Once you know, you know, hashtag spoilers, once you know the end... And it, it reframes Snape's actions mm-hmm. here. I think a, a little bit. Um, I mean, he definitely digs Harry as he does it. It's not. Yeah, no, like, he certainly takes pleasure in digging Harry. Yeah, like there, there is a level of truth to what Snape is saying, mm-hmm. and there's a level of confidence in that truth, yes. not just the sake of protecting, but to you know to to bust on him here mm-hmm. a little bit. I, what I do love about the way that this. Uh, scene is set up and this is such an important thing that the author does really well is uh you know she for all of her foibles in in r- ruining the fantastic beasts series uh for the films the books of harry potter she does a really great job at structuring properly and making sure that we have a real physical presence and you get an immediate sense of the presence uh harry feels when he enters this chamber uh, as soon as he walks in, he looks at all of the remaining contestants who seem much older now, and they seem much taller now than what they once were. And there are three contestants. One is Crum, who is off in the corner, being like just really um, within himself and hunched over and not really talking or doing anything with anybody. There's Cedric, who's at the fire, staring at the fire. He's very neutral. And when Harry walks in, Floor flips her hair over and says, oh, hey, Harry, blah, blah, blah. Where she says, who is this boy? But yada, yada. She thinks it's, it's, it's a messenger boy. But there are three distinct areas of the room. There are three distinct characteristics. And there are three distinct ways mm-hmm. that they are interacting with Harry. And they, that continues, by the way. It, w- Crumb doesn't say anything. Cedric, once he finds out that it's Harry, he's like, okay, well... That, that's it. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. And then Floor is like, hell no. And then that's what starts off the whole process. So not only are you getting a physical d- structure, you're getting an emotional and characterization structure for, for these characters. Such an important thing for the interactions in how Harry views all of these characters that he's with now. Mm-hmm. I love that sentence where, she, where the author writes, they all seemed a little taller now yeah. because these are people who in fact are older. They mm-hmm. are much more experienced. I mean, experienced quotations, uh, wizards in quotations than Harry. They know more than he does. Yep. You know, so you can see why he's intimidated. You know, I was just thinking a little bit more. Uh, we don't necessarily get to see too much of Severus Snape being able to use his legitimacy. We di- we get to see his eyes glinted ma- ma- malevolently through his... Malevolently. Male- whatever. Yes, malevolently <laughs> through his curtain of greasy black hair. But we don't see him looking at Harry. So Severus has the ability to, when he looks in Harry's eyes, we know this, um, to be able to see if Harry was telling the truth or not. Mm-hmm. And Severus also knows Harry sneaks out. Okay, Harry steals cars. Harry does bad stuff, okay? He has an invisibility cloak. He Mm -hmm. does bad things. So he's trying to put it out there that, yes, maybe Harry did this. And why would Severus Snape be so mad? Because he has to babysit Potter, okay? I would like to babysit Potter when he's just with all the other fourth years doing their potions, hanging on out. How much harder is it going to be to babysit itty bitty baby Potter? (laughs) Itty bitty baby baby Potter. Potter. (laughs) When... He's in the flippin' Triwizard Cup. Can't babysit him there, Snape. Sure, sure. No, no wonder you, he's mad. You're 100% right. Um, and then there's Dumbledore. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Yeah, he's just kind of like when all the students were trying to f- figure out ways to get themselves into the into the mm. tournament. He kind of lets all this go down. I mean, he 
there's a level of uh, uh, trust in this chapter. There, there's a theme of how can we trust you? Like uh, how is, is this process trustworthy? Uh, Dumbledore goes up to Harry and says quietly, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? And Harry says no. And that is that. Dumbledore believes There is eye him. contact. Professor Dumbledore was now looking down at Harry, who looked right back at him, trying to discern the expression of the eyes behind the half moon. Spectacles. Yeah, now that is that is very telling. Again, if you know what happens later on yes. in these books, that's a very telling yes. thing. Another thing I was thinking of too, why can't we all just get a, you know, Snape just gussy up some um, Veritas serum and be like, hey, Let's figure out if Pot Pot is telling the truth or not. I think Dumbledore confirms that at that very moment. He asks him while he's staring him in the eyes. He's able to see that Harry isn't lying. I know, but... So he doesn't need... Why does he need Veritas serum? Because nobody else believes Dumbledore. McGonagall is the one that actually has to go in and say, if Dumbledore says it's true, you better believe it's true. I think Shouldn't that that be enough? But we as the reader, we just need to be able to trust in Dumbledore. We shouldn't. I agree. But we do. But (laughs) that is 100%. Mary, once again... (laughs) Bam! Just like that. A winner! Uh, We have to remember, Harry in Dumbledore's eyes, yes, lovely boy, sacrificial lamb. Uh, Into a cause. Yes. But I'm saying in terms of the other characters, right? Why, if if there is such a question and nobody's believing Dumbledore in his judgment, why can't Snape just say, all right, let's get some Veritas serum. Let's figure it out. He could have. Probably because the author didn't know it existed at this point. Uh, there you go. I think that's a, fair, that, 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 that's a fair assumption. And then also, if we do have that, that... Hmm. Well, we do have Veritas Serum in this book. Actually, Barty Crouch Jr. has to ingest it. At the oh, end. he does. That's right. At the yeah. end. You're right. So she there, she does know it exists. I think I think that everyone just has to take Dumbledore's word for it. I mean, we have Madame Maxine and Karkaroff who are just like, you know, like whatevs. And then Barty Crouch Jr. and Little Bagman are by it. And that's why he asks, like, how about our impartial judges? What do you think? They could have easily said, yes, why don't we go get Veritas Serum? Why don't we go figure this out? They're here for it. Little Bagman is pumped that yeah. Harry Potter is in this. Right. Barty Crouch just wants to go home. <laughs> and there's another great thing that happens here. Alistair Moody. Yes. A.K.A. Barty Crouch Jr. This is another level of brilliance that the author brings to this book. She tells you straight up what is going to happen. And you just think, well, that's Alistair Moody. He's just, you know, he's he's paranoid. She even uses the other characters, specifically Karkaroff, to be like, mm, well, we heard that you're pretty paranoid, bro. You think that this thing's trying to kill you and it's like a garden hose or whatever yeah. it was. So she's using these characters that are physically, mentally strong heads, Mm -hmm. heads of schools to undermine, to undermine um, a character like Alistair Moody. Yet she's telling you again, straight up from the clouds, giving you the people's elbow and saying, nope, this is what's going to happen. Just you wait. Yep. Just you wait. Look at you rocking and rolling. Um, I love that she's able to do this. And she has done this pretty much in every book. Yeah. Lays it all out there for you, but it's just so hidden and woven that you don't know. He literally tells you, here's what happened. It was confunded. There was another school. Isn't that crazy? Maybe someone does wish Harry Potter harm. <laughs> right. And and the fact that Harry is thinking, like, you know, I know, I know that that, you know, Voldemort's around and I know he's like figuring things out because I had that dream. Like, don't mm-hmm. don't you forget that I had, mm-hmm. I'm trying to tell Sirius that it's not a big deal. I get it. But I had the dream. I understand. Things are, things are happening around me. He knows that Voldemort's around and he can't figure out how and why Voldemort would do such a thing. And of course, he doesn't know this, the, 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 the yeah. story that we do. I, I just, I love, 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 love that she has done this. Agreed. It's great. It's just, Agreed. just excellent stuff. So we do. We have everyone kind of complaining, but in the end, the their feet are, are put down. Dumbledore puts his foot down. No, we do. We have these two Hogwarts champions, the Bubatan, the Bobatan um, champion, the Durmstrang champion. Hey, how, how about Floor calling Harry Potter little boy? I love it. Oh, I'm kind of out on that. 
I I think it's Fleur. I, I like it for Does, the story. So for me, it's either Fleur doesn't know who Harry Potter is and doesn't know what he's done because that guy, that little boy, when he was 11, took out Voldemort. I don't think she knows who he is. And honestly, I don't think she cares. How does she not know who he is? He's He is... I'm Harry freaking Potter! How do you not know? Okay, I mean... It's like saying, I don't know who Tom Brady is. Let's just like take a step back, okay? Let's take a step back. Okay. When things happen in other countries, do they have as much power over you? Especially things that happened... Over a decade ago. Yes, in other if countries. somebody somebody was that was supposed to die, if somebody got shot in the head and was alive, that would that should have been dead, you'd know that person's name. Be like Jimmy. Jimmy Jimmy was the one that got shot and he died and he didn't die. And he was like perfectly fine. Didn't have any brain damage, her priority, nothing. Her priorities you would know are Jimmy's elsewhere. name. Her priorities are elsewhere. Jimmy Sullivan from Southie got shot. Well, sh- maybe he hasn't done anything fancy ever since. He's like a one hit wonder. <laughs> so you know how those go. Yes, I do. Um, I loved the little banter with Cedric. So I hope that I hope that you are able to hang out with this Hufflepuff. Um, Cedric's going to really kind of enlighten Blake. You know, we haven't had a lot of Hufflepuff time. We've had a lot of time. Uh, We've had a lot of time to make fun of Hufflepuffs. We've had a lot of time with Gryffindors. Uh, we are going to have some nice time with Ravenclaws, of course. But this is going to be kind of a, a lot of good time that you have. And I think this with... is probably by design, too. Yeah. Um, this is probably by design the from the author to actually give Hufflepuffs something. Uh, because the author has not given them anything. And then, you know, Cedric even asks him, like, so how did you do it? He's like, okay, so we're playing together. Yeah, we're buddies now. It's fine. Yeah, let's. so how'd you do it? And he tells him, you know, I didn't do it. I was telling the truth. And he says, oh, okay. And Harry could tell Cedric didn't believe him. Well, see you then. And yet still he takes the higher road. Like, like, okay, fine, sure. Okay, well, I'll see ya. Such a Hufflepuff. But it's so sweet and just like, you know, okay, he doesn't want to tell me. Like, that's fine. There's a thought, great, thought there's we were a, better friends than we were. There's a great three beat here with this, actually. Uh, the first is Cedric asking Harry, hey, how'd, how'd you do this? Harry's saying, I don't know. And then nobody in the common room believing Harry when he's like, I don't know. I, and then lastly, Ron. Ron shows up and says, okay, Harry, come on. Tell me how you did it. Mm-hmm. Come on now. And he's like, he even starts off smiling. Like, it's not the fact that Harry did it. That's not the issue. Like, Ron's happy for him. Like, legitimately. Ron gets pissed when Harry doesn't let him in on the secret. Yeah. How could you not let me in on this? How could you not? Like, it's oh, fine. You did it. Okay, whatever. Fine. But why didn't, why can't you tell me now? Or why didn't you include me? What are we doing? And then he has the, opposite reaction of Cedric, which makes him certainly more of a Gryffindor. It's so tough. Um, I was thinking about this on my drive today. I knew we were going to be talking about this chapter and of course the subsequent chapters coming up. Harry Potter, as like cool as he is to us, you know, he is, he is the boy who lived. He's really not that cool and popular. You know, he really has Ron and Hermione. We're going to be seeing that like, you know, you, you think about it, he has Neville and Seamus and Dean uh, who who just stay in the same room as him. They could mm-hmm. easily be all of his best friends. And I get sad for him because nobody really believes him. Hermione does. Hermione believes him. Dumbledore believes him. Snape, you know, we'll say. Um, but really nobody believes him. And he is such a a lonely kid. It makes me think back to like high school or junior high, you know, and I had different friends and maybe I got into a tiff with somebody. I would just sit at a different lunch table. I had like friends in different groups and I just don't feel that for Harry. You know, all of these eyes on him don't believe him. Thank goodness he has Hermione, but like he's a 14 year old boy and I just don't feel like he has that closeness. Yes, he has Fred and George. Ooh, I'm so proud of you. How'd you do it? You know, they're excited for him, but there's no one really that close to him and he's got a lot of stuff that he's gone through in his life. Got a lot of stuff. And the question I ask you, and this is the question I love asking every book, is this the low point? Low point for Harry Potter? Yeah. Because once Ron closes those shades in the bed. This is the beginning of the low point. This is the beginning. Wait until next chapter. That's a really low point. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. This is the beginning. This is... It's like it's a few day process, you know. We're st- we're still just on Halloween, as I said. Yeah, and you know we are uh, relatively halfway here. So, yeah. 
we're getting there. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, I think that's about it for this chapter. So again, relatively short chapter. Yep. A um, lot of subtext. Yeah. Lots of things being set up. Yep. And, oh, one last question I have for you. Bring it. Moody gives away the plan. Barty Crouch Jr. It's Barty Crouch Jr. Yeah. He's just telling you, yeah, this I, is my plan. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. And uh, Okay, sorry. All right, sorry. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. You ready for the different perspective? I am. I am. All right. I wanted to remind you that this different perspective is brought to you by jointhenerdclan.com. Thank you, everybody, at jointhenerdclan.com for becoming a member. We do have a goal of 1,000 members. We need a new computer. We need some new some new tech because our tech is nearly 10 years old, and we need it. So please do, become, uh, do consider becoming a member at jointhenerdclan.com. All right. Let's do it. Holy cricket, you're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger. And you are... Alistair <gasps> Moody! <laughs> Alistair Moody. A.K.A. Buddy Crouch Jr. How's it going, everybody? How's it going? I'm here for this moment. <laughs> For those of you who can't see, I have put my headphones over one of my eyeballs. And poor Blake is dying laughing. This is why you should be tuning in. This is why you need to be watching the video component. You're welcome. So, guys, let me tell you. Best day of work. You, you know when you you know when you have these big plans for work, you got these big projects and you and you practice for it and you set up for it and you practice with your boss and you got the presentation and you nail it and you want a mic drop. Uh-huh. This was that moment for me. You know, I watched the show Outlander and this guy in there Frank. Uh, he was a super spy. A super spy. <laughs> super spy. And I needed to study up on all my super spyness since I'm pretending to be somebody else for a year, which is awesome. <laughs> this I love it. Keeping this thing. Um, so this guy Frank in Outlander says oh, one of the God. best things to do uh-huh. when you when you're trying to lie is mm-hmm. actually tell as much truth that you possibly can. So oh. I took Frank Randall's advice and I just told everybody the truth, and nobody knows that it was me. Oh, yeah. Must have been a confundus charm. That Then that very magical object must have been a very awesome wizard. And uh, they must have put a different, you know, <laughs> different school in. Someone must want to hurt Harry Potter. Frank Flippin' Randall from Outlander. I'm telling you, he nailed it. Taught me everything I know. Everything you need to know about Every- life. I'm you learn from Outlander. Truly did. The end. Did a far sassanac. <laughs> oh, Mary. You, you you came from the clouds with that with that fake eye. That was You're welcome. Something special. Holy smokes! Only for the Potterverse. And seriously, people, if you are listening to the Potterverse and you never get to see the video components, you do want to join our complimentary texting service. Yes. Okay. All you got to do is you got to if you're in the U.S., take out your phones and you're going to text the phone number eight ten ten. And in the message field, the at symbol elder wand. So the at symbol elder wand, no spaces. Once again, the number is 81010. If you're outside the U.S., you just go to remind.com slash join slash elder wand. All right. Look at that. All right, Marvin. Uh, well, normally we would do the listener questions. We're not going to do that today. Uh, we will get to them next week. I know I said that last time, but we do have an, a hard out right now, so we got to get going. Uh, so if you do have questions, emails, whatever, email us at maryandblakemedia at gmail.com. We will get to them. I promise I have them all lined up in our document, ready to go. Let's close this out. We want to thank you so incredibly much, particularly those of you at jointhenerdclan.com for making all this possible. If you're not a member there yet, and we do bring you some Lumos in the time of Knox, now is the time to join. The holiday season is coming up, and we do love to give holiday cards to some of our friends there, uh, as long as you are at the $5 level and up. But even if you join the $2 level, it makes a huge difference, helps this mom and pop podcast company really keep on going. So thank you all so, so much from the bottom of our hearts for tuning in. We will keep Keep delving into the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> the Goblet of Fire. Note, my name's Mary. My name is Blake. Mischief managed. <laughs> <laughs>